Huh? What's this? Ah, it's the video. And you're giving... B bringing! Oh, this video's been brought to you by Audible. Have a free 30-day trial along with a free audiobook and two Audible originals by going to audible.com slash domics or text domics to 500-500. I did not get my driver's license until I was in my early 20s. In my province, we have three levels of licensing for typical four-wheeled vehicles. The G1, G2, and the G. Gangsta. The G1 is what most people consider to be the learner's permit, and it is what you gain when you pass the written part of the license test, regarding the rules of the road and traffic signs. It allows you to drive a car if accompanied by someone with the G license, but with a few restrictions. The G2 is gained after passing the road test, and it allows you to drive on your own, but with a few restrictions. And the final form, Gangsta G, is the full driver's license, gained by doing another road test, mainly to test your abilities on the highway, and frees you from many of the previous restrictions. Growing up, many of my classmates and peers were all in a rush to get their driver's license. They think, oh man, it's gonna be so awesome, I'm gonna be able to go anywhere I want. I can finally go on dates and pick up chicks and not have to wait for the bus anymore. Hey, hey my guy, if your mindset is girls don't like me because I can't drive, then you probably have poor taste in women anyway, and you're only gonna attract other people with poor taste like yours. Have fun tasting poor together. Not poor in terms of wealth, but in terms of doo-doo. I moved to the US in grade 11 and 12, and I feel like many of my classmates already had their license and were privileged enough to have cars, so most of them either drove to and from school or had a friend they could carpool with. And you didn't even need a nice car, people believe that simply being able to drive was enough to raise you on the social ladder. Meanwhile, I was one of the few who still took the bus, which was filled with mostly freshmen and sophomores. Mmm, soft s'mores. I didn't really mind too much. Eh, it took longer to get home, but then again I was 16, you know. It, what was my rush? To get home and play MapleStory? Yeah. Yeah, that's exactly right. This continued on to my college life when we moved back to Canada. I went to Ryerson University, huh, flex, in downtown Toronto, but I still lived at home with my family. I commuted to school every day, so I didn't really have a reason to get my license. I wouldn't have a car to drive anyway, and even if I did, driving downtown is a nightmare. Literally, the only accident I've ever been in was when I was downtown. Plus, I'd only get to borrow my parents' car in the evenings and weekends, and let's be honest, architecture students don't even get home until like midnight or later or even ever. Alright, I'm off to school. See you in two weeks. And I needed the weekend to catch up on sleep from all those all-nighters. I wasn't going places. But eventually, I got tired of not having a simple way to show my ID, so I decided I wanted to get my G1. Why are identities even dependent on your ability to drive? How do you ID a kid? Whoa there, hang on a sec. What's your name, kid? Delatgerp, spelled with a PH instead of an F. What? I got my G1 when I was maybe 19. I took a driving course and I'll never forget my instructor's name because he introduced himself like this. Hello, good morning everyone. Welcome to driving school. Today I am Raj. Wait, today? Well, what's your name tomorrow? And then the next day he'd reintroduce himself. Hello, today I am Raj. Dude, just remain Raj. Like, one time is fine. Honestly, the lessons were really straightforward and much of it seemed like common sense. Like, oh, if you're at a stop sign and there's a little boy crossing, do you A, drive forward and literally murder him, or B, uh, not that. And after like a week of lessons and a bit of studying, honestly, I should have just read the book and saved money, I wrote the test and passed it with flying colors. How do colors even fly? Flying colors idiom. Uh, derives from when ships would return home with their flags, also known as colors, flying to show that they had been victorious. Ah, well, no, I didn't go to war or invade a country, but yes, I passed the test easily. And they grade the tests really quickly too, like, right away. Like, everyone is aware if you failed or not. Hey, 
didn't pass, huh? Yeah, no, I guess not. Good. You think this is a joke? Learn the rules, man. So I got my G1 and I was excited and ready to finally practice some actual driving. I had like two weeks worth of road lessons from my instructor, not today Raj or tomorrow Raj, but a co-worker of his, and I guess it seems like most people have driven before or have been shown how a car works, because when my instructor came to pick me up and start my first lesson, I sat down at the driver's seat and he just said, alright, let's go. Huh? I'm sorry, did I accidentally press start and skip the tutorial? My parents have actually never let me drive their car, not even after I got my G1. When I asked if they could teach me some basics, they said, didn't we pay for the lessons? They're gonna teach you anyway. True, you're right. He is my instructor. He will instruct me. He did not instruct me. He gave me this unimpressed look like, ugh, why don't you already know how to do this thing that you're here to learn? Come on, man. If you paid for piano lessons and day one your teacher goes, all right, play, then you'd feel kind of scammed. Anyway, he eventually showed me the ropes, and off we went. Driving for the first time felt so exhilarating. I wasn't driving super fast at first, but the fact that I was in charge of all the movements of a car, it felt amazing. This definitely wasn't allowed, but a couple of months later, a few days before my road test, I had one last driving session and Raj decided to bring me to the neighborhood where they actually do the exam and had me do a run through of the course and warned me of the areas where most people failed. Listen, I'm not supposed to bring you here, but be careful on this stop sign, it's kind of hidden. Watch out for the school zone over there, be ready to slow down, and they'll likely make you do a parallel park on this uphill road, so let's go ahead and practice that. Thanks Raj today, I know you probably did that just to boost the student pass rate statistics of your driving school, but I really appreciate it. BAM! Got my G2! And a couple of years later, I did my G test and flew some colors again. Gangsta. Guys, please take driving seriously. This ain't Indonesia, you can't just bribe your testers to get your license. I know I make a lot of rants about annoying drivers, but that's because I want people to drive well, safe, and aware. We all share the same roads. Try not to act like you're the only one on them. Once I started driving, I'd have a lot of downtime on my way to my destinations, but now I can listen to audiobooks while I travel. Two birds, a one bird feeder. Stop throwing stones at birds. Head on over to audible.com slash domics and enjoy a 30 day trial along with a free audiobook and two Audible originals. With the Audible app, you can enjoy your audiobooks wherever and whenever. They're yours to keep for life and you can re-listen to them even if you cancel your membership. As a member, you'll receive three credits every month, which you can spend on one audiobook and two Audible originals, regardless of the price. Now that I'm free from the shackles of the show, I can listen to the source material that A Game of Thrones is based off of, A Song of Ice and Fire by George R. R. Martin, or delve deeper into the world with Fire and Blood, 300 years before A Game of Thrones, or The World of Ice and Fire, The Untold History of Westeros. Once again, that's audible.com slash domics, link below, or text domics to 500, 500 for a 30-day trial, a free audiobook, and two Audible originals. Enjoy!